Hey guys, Edbud here. Today we're talking about running shoe uppers. With all those new versions of running shoes that come out, is it a little bit like the story of the Emperor's new clothes? Or is it vital for innovation? Let's talk. Hey guys, thanks for joining me. Ed Bud here, for all you cats out there, is a discussion piece today centered around running shoe uppers. There's been lots of upper only updates recently, hasn't there? They promise finer fit, breezy breathability, ludicrous lockdown, and awesome aesthetics. But do we actually need them? Do they improve the models that much that they make them a surefire purchase, or should we leave them to collect the virtual dust? Let me know what your views are down in the comments. Saucony, of course, have put out new colorways of the famous Endorphin Speed and the Pro. Those colorways of the first edition of the shoes have dropped as recently as a couple of weeks back. And of course, now they've dropped the second iterations of the shoes with very slight upper updates. And it isn't really clear if the updates actually make all that much difference at all to the shoe's performance. They feature the exactly the same midsole and outsole combinations and we've seen that from other manufacturers too. The instant the new versions of the shoes hit the shelves, the old ones receive a price discount. The classic sale situation. Despite the upper being the only thing that's actually new on the shoe. I mean, they even smell the same. Nike and Saucony are so confident in their shoes that they've only bothered to update the uppers on models like the Pegasus, the Endorphin Pro and the Speed. Even the next percent as well has just seen an upper update. You don't see too many complaints from anybody though about some of these. Some people really like the midsoles in those shoes and they're quite happy they've just released some new versions of them. I guess at least the prices aren't going up on these new models of the shoes. Even the next percent too, for example, is a little cheaper here in the UK. It's about 30 pounds cheaper. Don't know how they've managed it. Pro and the Speed from Saucony, the same price. Does an upper change really make that much of a difference? Or is it just a way to extend the life cycle of that model of a shoe? You just get another year, don't you? Or another season out of the same midsole and outsole technology. Other brands like Asics, Adidas and New Balance are making some quite drastic changes to the uppers, midsoles and outsoles on their shoes. I mean, the new Adidas models for 2021 are completely different to last year. Some of the alterations appear to be for the better and some of them for the worse. I mean, everybody kept pointing the finger at Nike, didn't they, a while back about the Alpha Fly being too high and there being too much stack. And that looks like nothing now compared to the Prime X. It almost makes the Alpha Fly look like a racing flat, doesn't it? I say that very tongue in cheek. The three strike brands seem to be mixing it up as much as they possibly can, throwing mud at the wall and trying all of their different upper materials and midsole technologies in different combinations to see which one works out best. You do sometimes get the feeling it's a bit like the Emperor's new clothes, you know, have a brand new upper and that it makes the shoe so much better. You know, it's less and less present, it's thinner, more breathable. We hear it every year, don't we? Every single year. We're seeing bigger price ranges though, aren't we? Between the daily shoes and those race shoes. Adidas now topping out at £220 for the Prime X. And you go right down to the Adios 6, you know, 110. It's much more reasonable. Not sure I'll go for the Prime X. I think I'm tall enough already. I think I'd have to raise the door frames a bit in my house to even walk around in it. Many runners talk about how superb the original Clifton series was from Hoka, how innovative and perfect it felt. Numerous upper changes though since the first one and sticking with the same type of midsole foam it's really dampened the interest amongst runners on that one. I think if you like the Clifton, great, but I see less and less people getting on with them. The upper almost seems like a bit of an afterthought on a couple of Hoka shoes I've tried out. That Clifton 7 and the Rocket X. I mean, I like the midsoles, but not sure about the uppers. That's the thing that needs to change there. I mean, I got that Mac 4 upper to work for me with some lace larks and some custom canoodling. Guys, if you are enjoying the videos, please make sure you hit that subscribe button and click the bell below for notifications and help us along to 20,000 subs. Like you've been the masters of that regular season update, haven't they? I mean, look back at the Jordan line. They've kept that one going for about 35 different editions, haven't they? I know that the Jordan logo is its kind of own brand in itself, but it's certainly a Nike shoe. There was updates to that one even when Jordan had retired. Even at the end of his career, they continued it and other top level basketball players started wearing them and they used those guys to help promote the shoe. They just knock together new ones, don't they, with nods to the old classics that everybody likes. 
I think the strange things that have been going on over the last 16 months in the world really have caused some quite considerable upset in terms of design, development, and then fulfillment of running shoes. It's really fouled up the whole manufacture and fulfillment process. Maybe that's why we've got so many shoes recently with the same midsole and outsole combinations and they're just throwing different uppers on there. Are we seeing some new designs dropping right now that were actually created back in 2020? I see some of Nike shoes released over the last few months were manufactured sometimes even in the middle of 2020. So I think those designs probably came from months before that. So it's clearly quite a long lead time with the whole creation of a running shoe. I think an upper can really make or break a shoe. The RC Elite version one from New Balance had a fantastic upper, a superb all round setup on that shoe. Just a few little refinements here and there perhaps could have made it even better. But in the new version, we just get more midsole and they've changed one of the best bits about the original version one. All we needed there was just slight upper variations just to elevate it even higher. I mean, how can the Endorphin Speed 2 possibly improve upon the success of the first model? I mean, it was almost a perfect piece of propulsive footwear. I hope the upper changes in the Speed 2 don't negatively impact what is already a fantastic model. Everyone loves the performance of that shoe and you get a feeling that anything you do to change it is only gonna cause some discomfort for people. People just like stuff the same, don't they? When it works, don't change it. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. In almost all situations, the grass isn't always greener, is it? We're always guilty of that, I think, as shoe enthusiasts to get the next model because it's gonna be better and then we're let down because it's changed things we like about the shoe that we've become familiar with. Are you tired of the constant upper update merry-go-round? Which of your favorites have been turned into duds by a poorly implemented upper switch? Let me know in the comments. For me, it's more about the smell of the shoe. Have they changed the smell? That reminds me, I need to get some new strimmer wire. A quick musical interlude for you. I'm not sure if it's because the European Championships are on, but I'm always reminded of the 90s, Euro 96 and the Three Lions and all that stuff. One fantastic song from my earlier years is from Corner Shop and their track Brimful of Asher, the Norman Cook remix. I can remember dancing like a lunatic to this with all my friends. It brings back some really nice memories and feelings from the time. Zero responsibilities. Can you remember that? What that was like? Brimful of Asher is a fantastic track. In the first place, the original was a lot slower, but Norman Cook did a fantastic remix, a proper old school breakbeat mix. You can hear that the guitars have been kind of time shrunk to fit into the new tempo. The drums are slamming and it's some really fantastic production. It just seems to inject loads of energy into the tune and it just makes it one of those perfect sort of mid 90s dance floor stompers. I don't think anybody can possibly feel sad or depressed after they listen to this one. Brimful of Asher on the 45. Everybody needs a Peabax pillow. Go and relive your youth like Ed Bud's been doing. Listen to some Corner Shop, Brimful of Asher, Norman Cook Remix. Thanks for tuning in today, guys. Please post your comments below. Make sure, if you haven't done so already, to hit that subscribe button and click the bell below for notifications. I want to roll out those new videos for you. It really helps the channel out too if you give this video a thumbs up like and also share it with your running buddies. My name's Ed Bud and I'll be seeing you.